Today we're going to be talking about brown violetto van Leer syndrome, which is an autosomal recessive genetic disease that was first discovered in the late 1800s. There are less than 100 known cases to date, and the onset usually occurs somewhere between infancy and 30 years old. Primary indications of BVVL present as a bilateral sensory neural deafness and progressive pontobulbar palsy. That just means that the degeneration of motor neurons in the spinal cord and cerebral cortex lead to symptoms such as respiratory difficulties, limb weakness, slurring of speech, facial weakness, and in some cases, optic damage. The only way to diagnose BVVL is through genetic testing, looking at the genetic sequence SLC52A1, 2, and 3, which are responsible for primary human riboflavin transporters RFVT1, 2, and 3, respectively. Now we'll watch a patient experience video. We've got a medical mystery to share with you tonight. One that had the family of a little girl from Durham, North Carolina named Kara Green quite scared and the doctors treating her completely baffled. Vicente Arena shows us how Kara's case was finally cracked. Purple. Yeah. Purple, yeah. <laughs> Two-year-old Kara Green was a healthy toddler until last November when her parents, Christian and Clayton, noticed something wasn't right. Her eye movements were just completely erratic, and that was really scary. You would look at her, and her eyes would just move all over. Within weeks, Kara lost muscle control and became unsteady on her feet. Her arms grew limp, and even keeping her head up was a struggle. And then we started noticing her dropping toys, falling on her face, not catching herself with her arms. Nine doctors tested Kara for a range of terrifying possibilities, including a brain tumor. Did you think that you were going to lose Kara? Yeah, I mean, there were... Um, it almost seemed inevitable. Kara was just days from starting chemotherapy for a presumed autoimmune disorder. Can you say hi to Dr. Shashi? When she saw Dr. Vandana Shashi, a geneticist at Duke University Medical Center. What were you thinking when you saw all of these symptoms presenting themselves? It was a real mystery. Dr. Shashi suspected a genetic problem. Using new technology, Duke researchers sped up a process that typically takes three months. In just three weeks, they pinpointed a genetic mutation so rare, only about a hundred cases have been diagnosed. That morning, before we gave them results, my heart was racing. I was so excited. I wanted to rush into that room and tell them, we have a treatment for your daughter. Kara, what is this? Kara has brown Violetto van Leer syndrome, or BVVL. Fingers. Fingers. As complicated as it sounds, the treatment is simple. So you're telling us that if we give her a vitamin, <laughs> that she's going to, like, she'll stop getting worse and she might get better? Let's do your medicine. Can you do your medicine? Massive doses of the vitamin B2 that she lacked led to dramatic improvements. Now Kara can feed herself and lift her arms. Good job. A medical mystery solved by cracking her own genetic code. Boom! Boom! Oh. Yay! Vicente Arena, CBS News, Durham, North Carolina. We've seen a patient experience. Let's take a closer look at the mechanisms of action. Riboflavin is commonly known as vitamin B2, and it is primarily responsible for metabolizing our food into glucose, which the body then uses as energy. Much like many other vitamins, B2 can't be made by the body. This means that we have to absorb it through the intestinal tract through transporters. Specifically, SLC52A1 and 3, which are expressed in the intestinal tract, while SLC52A2 is expressed in the brain. In BVVL, those transport proteins fail to absorb dietary riboflavin, resulting in an immediate degradation of health. Here are some typical recommendations just to put into perspective how much extra riboflavin is needed to treat this disorder. There is no known toxicity level for riboflavin and no adverse side effects reported from access dosage. Most of the new research is focusing on hearing aid options for treatment because the auditory damage is usually permanent while most other symptoms recover with supplementation of riboflavin. With that said, Sometimes assisted ventilation is needed if their lung capacity was compromised severely. So with the hearing loss, we have the option of traditional hearing aids and cochlear implants. Let's talk about what kind of hearing loss we're dealing with. 
The hearing loss seen in BVVL is classified as a subtype of auditory neuropathy spectrum disorder, or ANSD. There can be a presynaptic synaptopathy, which refers to a lack of glutamate release in the hair cell, or postsynaptic, which refers to the degeneration of terminal axons. BVVL hearing loss is considered a form of postsynaptic ANSD because of the damage to the auditory nerve neurons and the subsequent lack of synapse function. However, if riboflavin is administered within 12 months of hearing loss onset, it can result in some recovery, depending on the severity. Traditional hearing aids have proved minimally beneficial because the sound wave amplification isn't getting at the root of the problem. Cochlear implants are by far the best treatment for severe cases, although the success rate is varied. Because they bypass the hair cell completely, they can target the auditory nerve directly and sometimes increase synapse function. While there have been mouse models in recent literature that focused on the effects of gene knockout or mutations within the riboflavin transporter genes, the findings were not transferable to humans and have yet to look solely at BVVL. Moving forward, it would seem there are a few things to keep in mind when it comes to BVVL. First, request testing as early as possible. Electrophysiological evaluations and genetic testing can be used to get an early diagnosis. Keep communication open and honest with your healthcare professional and don't be afraid to seek out more than one opinion. Most importantly, when in doubt, B2 it out. There's no danger of treating symptoms like this with riboflavin unless you are taking another medication that may interact negatively. It's important to check with your doctor, but if the green light is a go, it's the best treatment. Thank you for watching and have a great day.